And every time that we've gotten access, you talk, you know, the day the universe changed. Those really changed. The stars have always whispered secrets to those bold enough to listen. Their distant fires burning with a power that shaped the cosmos. For centuries, humanity gazed upward, dreaming of harnessing that celestial energy, a dream that felt as unreachable as the heavens themselves. But in the quiet, pre-dawn hours of September 2021, inside a nondescript laboratory at MIT's Plasma Science and Fusion Center, that dream cracked open. Engineers stood in the glow of their machines, hearts pounding as they achieved what many had deemed impossible, a fusion magnet generating a staggering 20 Tesla magnetic field, 400,000 times stronger than Earth's own. This wasn't just a scientific milestone. It was a moment that could rewrite the future. The oil industry, that titan of the modern age, felt the ground tremble beneath its empire. This single breakthrough, born in the hum of MIT's labs, might just be the spark that ignites the end of oil's reign. A revolution not of scarcity, but of abundance, threatening to flood the world with clean, limitless energy. Imagine a world where energy isn't a commodity fought over in boardrooms or battlefields, but a boundless resource as common as the seawater lapping at our shores. For decades, fusion energy has been the holy grail of science, a tantalizing promise always just out of reach. Not because the physics didn't add up, stars like our sun have been fusing atoms for billions of years after all, but because the engineering seemed insurmountable. To mimic the sun's power on Earth, we needed reactors the size of small cities, costing billions, devouring resources and time. The skeptics called it a pipe dream, a technology forever 30 years away. But MIT's breakthrough shattered that narrative. Their high-temperature superconducting magnet, a marvel of human ingenuity, doesn't just push the boundaries, it obliterates them. This magnet, pulsing with a force that could contain the fury of a star, allows fusion reactors to shrink from behemoths to machines that could fit inside a high school gymnasium. Smaller, cheaper, and fiercely efficient, these reactors promise to deliver energy at a cost that could rival, or even undercut, fossil fuels. The implications are dizzying. For the first time, fusion isn't just a dream, it's a blueprint. The oil industry, that sprawling giant built on a century of dominance, senses the storm coming. It's not just the science that's shifting, it's the economics. Fusion doesn't need vast oil fields, pipelines snaking across continents, or tanker ships braving stormy seas. Its fuel, deuterium and tritium, comes from seawater and lithium, resources so abundant they could power humanity for billions of years. A single glass of fusion fuel holds the energy of a million gallons of oil, a fact that makes the sprawling infrastructure of fossil fuels feel suddenly archaic. Oil executives, sharp and calculating, aren't waiting for the inevitable. They're hedging their bets, pouring hundreds of millions into fusion startups. Chevron, Norway's Equinor, Italy's Ani. They're not just dipping their toes, they're diving in. Eni, for instance, invested $50 million in Commonwealth Fusion Systems, MIT's spinoff, and later doubled down, securing a seat on the board. Equinor joined a $1.8 billion funding round in 2021, while Chevron backed Zap Energy, another fusion contender. Why would oil giants fund the very technology that could render them obsolete? Because they see the future, and it's not crude. It's a world where energy is so cheap, so abundant, that entire industries, transportation, manufacturing, heating, pivot away from fossil fuels, leaving oil as a relic of a bygone era. This isn't a story of oil running dry. It's a story of oil becoming irrelevant. Fusion's threat is insidious, eroding oil's dominance from the edges. Picture green hydrogen, a fuel that could power planes and ships but is currently too expensive to produce. Fusion changes that equation overnight delivering electricity so cheap that hydrogen becomes a viable rival to jet fuel in bunker oil. Electric vehicles, already nibbling at oil's market share, would surge forward unshackled by grid limitations. Fusion plants could provide the massive stable power needed to charge millions of cars, trucks, and buses, rendering gasoline pumps as quaint as horse-drawn carriages. The market, ever ruthless, will choose the cheaper option. When synthetic fuels cost less than jet fuel, 
when hydrogen-powered ships outprice oil tankers, when electric cars charge for pennies, oil won't vanish because it's gone. It'll vanish because it's unnecessary. This is the quiet terror rippling through boardrooms in Houston, Riyadh, and Moscow. Not a direct assault, but a slow, relentless erosion that could make oil economically obsolete. The human stakes are even higher. Oil has shaped our world, not just our cars or factories, but our wars, our alliances, our very way of life. Nations like Saudi Arabia, Russia, and Venezuela have wielded their reserves like a scepter, their influence tied to the world's thirst for crude. Fusion, with its democratic fuel, threatens to dismantle that power. When every nation can draw energy from seawater, the chokeholds of OPEC and oil-rich regimes loosen. Military alliances built to secure shipping lanes, diplomatic ties forged to ensure oil access, sanctions leveraging energy dependence, all could fade into irrelevance. The Pentagon's DARPA is quietly funding fusion, not just for clean energy, but for its military potential. Imagine aircraft carriers powered by compact fusion reactors sailing for years without refueling. Picture remote bases, once vulnerable to fuel convoy attacks, running on self-contained fusion units. In Afghanistan, one in eight U.S. casualties came from protecting fuel shipments. A grim toll fusion could erase. A military freed from fuel logistics isn't just more efficient. It's a strategic revolution, redefining how power is projected across the globe. Yet fusion's true magic lies in its human story. The engineers at MIT, toiling in the pre-dawn hours of 2021, weren't just chasing data, they were chasing a dream. Their no-insulation coil technique, a daring gamble that left superconducting tapes exposed to bypass hot spots, defied skeptics, and proved stable under the fiercest conditions. When they pushed their magnet to failure, it wasn't reckless. It was a calculated act of courage, gathering data to ensure spark is success. This is humanity at its best refusing to bow to impossible. As Spark prepares for its 2026 plasma ignition and ARC aims for the grid by the early 2030s, the timeline once mocked as always 30 years away has collapsed. Microsoft's 2023 deal with Helium Energy to buy fusion power by 2028 isn't just a contract, it's a declaration that the future is now. Governments too are waking up. The U.S. Department of Energy calls for a fusion pilot plant by 2035. The U.K.'s Step Tokamak aims for 2040. This isn't a race for bragging rights. It's a race to redefine how we power our world. The end of oil won't come because we run out. It'll come because we've built something better. As former U.S. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu said, the Stone Age didn't end for lack of stones, and the Oil Age won't end for lack of oil. Fusion is that better thing a technology that doesn't just compete but transforms. By the 2040s, as fusion plants multiply, oil demand could plateau, then decline, not from scarcity, but from obsolescence. The fusion industry, projected to grow to $80 billion by 2035 and $350 billion by 2050, isn't just an economic force, it's a new paradigm. Oil's vast infrastructure will linger, but its relevance will fade as fusion powers cities, fuels planes, and lights homes. The next energy war won't be fought over oil fields, but in labs and factories, over who masters fusion's patents, supply chains, and engineering. The winners will shape the next century. The losers will be footnotes. This is the dawn of a new era, not just for energy, but for humanity. Fusion isn't just about power, it's about possibility. It's the audacity to look at the stars and say, we can do that. It's the courage to build a world where energy lifts us up, not tears us apart. As ARC's first electrons flow into Virginia's grid, as fusion plants rise across the globe, we'll look back at this moment, the hum of spark, the glow of plasma, the dream made real, and know it was when the world changed. The oil age for all its might will end not with a bang, but with a quiet, inevitable shift to something brighter. The stars have given us their secret. Now it's up to us to build the future they promise. The dawn of fusion isn't just a scientific leap. 
It's a reckoning for the world as we know it. In the shadow of MIT's breakthrough, where magnets hum with the power to cage a star, the IRC reactor looms, a machine not of theory but of destiny. Designed to feed the grid with 400 megawatts of clean, relentless energy, enough to light up 150,000 homes. ARC is no mere prototype. It's a promise of abundance. A world where energy isn't rationed or fought over but flows freely, like water from an endless spring. As Commonwealth Fusion Systems prepares to build ARC in Chesterfield, Virginia, aiming to power homes by the early 2030s, the oil industry stands at a crossroads. This isn't just another competitor in the energy market. It's a force that could render oil's century-long reign obsolete. The question isn't whether fusion will change the world. It's how fast and who will shape the future it brings. The race is on, and the stakes are nothing less than the soul of our civilization. Fusion's allure lies in its purity. Unlike the smoky haze of coal plants or the fragile dance of nuclear fission, fusion offers a near-mythical ideal. Zero carbon emissions, no risk of catastrophic meltdowns, and waste so minimal it fades to safety within decades, not millennia. Its fuel, deuterium from seawater, tritium bred from abundant lithium, could power humanity for billions of years. A single glass of this fuel holds the energy of a million gallons of oil, a statistic that feels less like science and more like magic. This is what makes fusion so revolutionary. It doesn't just solve today's problems. It obliterates the constraints that have shaped human history. Energy scarcity has fueled wars, toppled economies, and divided nations. Fusion, with its promise of limitless power, could rewrite that story, offering a future where energy is a unifier, not a divider. As Dr. Michael Orenberger, a veteran fusion researcher, once said, this is the closest humanity has ever come to an ideal energy source, a gift from the stars brought to earth by our own hands. But the shadow of oil looms large. Its infrastructure, a sprawling web of pipelines, refineries, and tankers, has been a century in the making, woven into the fabric of global economies. Even as fusion's timeline accelerates, oil won't vanish overnight. The 2030s may see ARC's first electrons flow into the grid, but scaling fusion to challenge a $3 trillion industry will take decades. Building supply chains for high-temperature superconducting magnets, training engineers to tame plasma hotter than the sun, and raising the capital to dot the landscape with fusion plants, all demand time and resolve. The oil industry, cunning and resilient, knows this. It's not standing still, hoping fusion falters. It's adapting with giants like BP eyeing fusion alongside renewables, repositioning themselves as energy companies, not just oil barons. They're betting on a future where they don't just drill for fuel, but build the reactors that power the world. Yet even their deep pockets can't stop the tide. Financial markets are already shifting, with banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley warning clients that oil's long-term dominance is no longer a safe bet. The smart money is flowing to fusion, with over $7 billion invested in startups since 2022, backed by visionaries who see a world beyond fossil fuels. The geopolitical stakes are even more profound. Oil has long been a weapon, its control shaping alliances and sparking conflicts. Nations like Saudi Arabia, Russia, and Venezuela have wielded their reserves like a scepter, their influence tied to the world's thirst for crude. Fusion, with its democratic fuel, threatens to dismantle that power. When every nation can draw energy from seawater, the chokeholds of OPEC and oil-rich regimes loosen. Military alliances built to secure shipping lanes, diplomatic ties forged to ensure oil access, sanctions leveraging energy dependence, all could fade into irrelevance. The Pentagon's DARPA is quietly funding fusion, not just for clean energy, but for its military potential. Imagine aircraft carriers powered by compact fusion reactors sailing for years without refueling. Picture remote bases, once vulnerable to fuel convoy attacks, running on self-contained fusion units. In Afghanistan, one in eight U.S. casualties came from protecting fuel shipments. A grim toll fusion could erase. A military freed from fuel logistics isn't just more efficient. It's a strategic revolution, redefining how power is projected across the globe.
Yet Fusion's true magic lies in its human story. The engineers at MIT, toiling in the pre-dawn hours of 2021, weren't just chasing data, they were chasing a dream. Their no-insulation coil technique, a daring gamble that left superconducting tapes exposed to bypass hotspots, defied skeptics and proved stable under the fiercest conditions. When they pushed their magnet to failure, it wasn't reckless. It was a calculated act of courage, gathering data to ensure Spark is success. This is humanity at its best, refusing to bow to impossible. As Spark prepares for its 2026 plasma ignition, and ARC aims for the grid by the early 2030s, the timeline once mocked as always 30 years away has collapsed. Microsoft's 2023 deal with Helion Energy to buy fusion power by 2028 isn't just a contract, it's a declaration that the future is now. Governments too are waking up. The US Department of Energy calls for a fusion pilot plant by 2035. The UK's Step Tokamak aims for 2040. This isn't a race for bragging rights. It's a race to redefine how we power our world. The end of oil won't come because we run out. It'll come because we built something better. As former U.S. Energy Secretary Stephen Chu said, the Stone Age didn't end for lack of stones, and the Oil Age won't end for lack of oil. Fusion is that better thing, a technology that doesn't just compete but transforms. By the 2040s, as fusion plants multiply, oil demand could plateau, then decline, not from scarcity, but from obsolescence. The fusion industry, projected to grow to $80 billion by 2035 and $350 billion by 2050, isn't just an economic force, it's a new paradigm. Oil's vast infrastructure will linger, but its relevance will fade as fusion powers cities, fuels planes, and lights homes. The next energy war won't be fought over oil fields, but in labs and factories, over who masters fusion's patents, supply chains, and engineering. The winners will shape the next century. The losers will be footnotes. This is the dawn of a new era, not just for energy, but for humanity. Fusion isn't just about power. It's about possibility. It's the audacity to look at the stars and say, we can do that. It's the courage to build a world where energy lifts us up, not tears us apart. As ARC's first electrons flow into Virginia's grid, as fusion plants rise across the globe, we'll look back at this moment, the hum of spark, the glow of plasma, the dream made real, and know it was when the world changed. The oil age, for all its might, will end not with a bang, but with a quiet, inevitable shift to something brighter. The stars have given us their secret. Now it's up to us to build the future they promise.